What I'm going to do, instead of going to 1 Thessalonians 14, going to Revelation 22, and this is the epilogue. This is the, the final words, the final words. You ever talk to somebody and say, I've got the last words in this. Maybe you had somebody to tell you, I've got the last word in this, husbands. Amen. I've got the last word in this. So sometimes we, we see this happening. The title of my message tonight is The Last Words. And in Revelation 22, verses 6 through 21, the last chapter of the last book in the Bible, I'm going to run through this very quickly. We've been having a wonderful time, and I pray we'll continue to do that through this message. But I want you to see what's going on here. Read it out loud with me so people around you can hear your voice. And he said unto me, these sayings are what? Faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the? Amen. Behold, blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to? Before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. What are these next two words? Oh, tell your neighbor that real quickly. Tell another neighbor that real quickly. Tell yourself that real quickly. Amen. Worship God. Amen. We're just going to worship God between then and the time he takes us home. Amen. That's what we're doing today. And he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. For what? The time is at hand. Tell your neighbor that real quickly. The time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Now what he's saying there is the Lord's coming and you're not going to have time to change anything. So you need to get changed before this happens. You can still get changed if a trumpet don't sound within the next second. You still got a chance to get saved. Still got a chance to get cleaned up. Amen. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city." For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh lie. What he's saying for without, he's talking about outside the gate. If you're not inside the gate in heaven, then you're outside the gate in a lake of fire with the devil, the antichrist, and the false prophet and missed everything God wanted you to have. That's why he's saying that. Amen. Verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the, whoo, hallelujah, I like that. That's a new day, amen. And the spirit, read it with me, and the spirit and the bride say, who's the bride? We are, the church, the saints of God. Let's do it again. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. God forbid and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith what? Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Final phrase and verse, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. 
Let me run through this right quickly. I want to show you the last words. We're in the day. We're down to the final run. Signs of the end time all around us. The trumpet's going to sound. The world stage is set perfectly. There are no prophecies to be fulfilled to prevent the rapture from taking place. All of that's been done for many, many years ago. The, the rapture could have taken place many years here in the past, but we are seeing the signs of the end time so powerful and so overwhelming it's going to be very easily for a man of lawlessness called the Antichrist to slip into position and through the satellite and the computers and all of the nuclear weapons and everything that's got to fulfill all the scriptures the Bible said would happen when the Antichrist takes over and the world is turned upside down into world wars and the Antichrist takes charge of everybody and controls everything going on in our lives. And he can do it. He can do it. Even the government knows everything about us now. Come on now. They know everything. You got the credit cards. You got all the, all the information. They've got it all. They know what to do and they know how to. And an Antichrist can easily control everything we got. Let me share with you the last words in the word of God to these. First of all, the last words of the angel. Do you see this? The last words of the angel, verses 6 through 11. And there's three things I want to say about it. He says, these sayings are faithful and true. All through the Bible, we see God sent angels, and the word angel means messenger. God sends angels to communicate a message to us humans. And he sends it to us in different ways, in different fashions. Sometimes they saw the angel, sometimes they don't. Psalm 34 says, the angel of the Lord in camps round about them that love and fear him. That means I got an angel around me. Do you see him? I don't either, but I sure feel security because of him and the blood of the lamb and the Holy Ghost and the Father and the Son, amen, because we know, how many of you know you got an angel because he's hit, rescued you a many a time, amen? You know that just by that. This scripture tells us that the Lord sent an angel and to do in a whole lot of things. He had angels going in all different directions, but this angel is saying these sayings are faithful and they are true. Angels don't lie. Not God's angels. Not God's. The fallen angels do, but God's angels don't. This is God's angel. And he said these sayings in the book of Revelation, they are faithful. You will see them come to pass and they are true. So you need to take note of it and remember it. Second thing he says here is to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Shortly be done. That means in the time span of God from the time he sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior and he was crucified and buried and arose from the dead, 40 days later ascended to heaven, prayed to the Father, 10 days later sent the Holy Ghost in the upper room. The church got going in the first century and then all the way up to where we are today in this new millennium, amen, second millennium. And uh, the Spirit has been working and moving throughout the centuries, now two millenniums almost, uh, that he has been working and ministering in the church, through the church, to reach out to everybody possible in order to get people to look up to the Lord, repent of their sins, and be saved. So God's plan started and we are at the end of the road my friend we are at the end of the prophecies the thousands of prophecies in the Bible the whole majority of them I wish I knew the exact number but I know this much that 95% or more are already fulfilled and the handful that's left has to do with after the rapture after the rapture we are at rapture moment right now, 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 the rapture could take place. Good God, hallelujah. Woo! And at midnight, the angel shouted, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And they were snatched out of this world and taken into heaven to meet Jesus. It can happen and it's going to happen. I believe it'll happen. Uh, I've heard of many a preacher say that he believed it happened in his generation in his time and I saw a lot of them breathe their last breath and go on to heaven anyhow. 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 You can't lose if it's by death in the grave or if it's by the rapture. You can't lose if you'll stay blood washed, heaven bound, anchored in God and holding to the nail scarred hand of Jesus. Amen. Stay rapture ready. Stay rapture ready and then you'll be ready for death too. All right? Good preaching, Bob. Amen. Praise God. 
Three times in this chapter he says, I come quickly. Verse 7, verse 12, and verse 20. Three times. You ever saw that? Anytime God repeats something in the word of God, he's trying to tell us something. Three times in this chapter he says, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. You know what I think he's saying? I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. You hard-headed people, can you not hear what I'm saying? I'm coming. Straighten up and live right. Get your house in order. Look around you and realize things can't keep going the way they are. Wake up, wake up, church, and tell the world to get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm coming to get you. Woo! Good God. Woo! I was thinking when the choir was a singing and Chris was a talking about needing the Holy Ghost and what he does to help him and so forth. I'm thinking also, and the Holy Ghost reminds us, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says he is the earnest of our inheritance, which means the Holy Ghost is a down payment of the resurrection. Jesus, or Paul said it in Romans, he said, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, then he that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by that same spirit. How many of you felt the overwhelming power of the Holy Ghost around here today? My, come on, if you really felt the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost, wave your hand to glory. That's God saying, hadn't forgot my promise. That's Jesus saying, I hadn't forgot what I promised. I told you I'm coming back. Here's a little touch of that resurrection. Good God. Whoa. Here's a little touch of that resurrection power. Here's a little touch. Here's a little fire. Here's a little spirit. Do you know when you was about to give up? You know when the load was so heavy? You know when the battle was so tough? You didn't think you was going to make it? Things got black. Things got dark. You got down. You were already down almost to the ground. You thought you was going to collapse. And all of a sudden, something got a hold of you. Something got a hold of you. Something got a hold of you. And all of a sudden, you rose up like a giant. And the God gave you the boldness and the peace and the power and you started swinging the sword and you dug yourself out. You fought that devil out of your home, out of your family and you got through that valley. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That was a resurrection spirit. That little touch of the Holy Ghost, that little touch of the spirit, look at your neighbor and say, that's resurrection power. Anybody got the Holy Ghost? Amen. You got resurrection power. How do you keep bouncing back? You've got resurrection power. Why didn't you collapse? Why didn't you get wiped out? Why didn't you quit? Why didn't you do this, that, or the other? Because somebody said something, did something, hurt you, offended you, got you or somebody else upset and got you all bent out of shape. How is it that you kept going, you kept believing, and you got over it, and you went on and said, ain't nothing to that. That was just a trick of the devil. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to serve God. You got a resurrection spirit in you, hallelujah, that keeps you going no matter what. Glory to God, hallelujah. Touch somebody and say, God, put it in them. Put it in them, that resurrection spirit. John was told to worship God. That's another sermon. I'm not even going to dwell there. But he was told, worship God. Don't work. The angel said, don't fall at my feet, fall at his. That's what he was saying. I got a quote from one of the classic commentators on Revelation. And he said this, and I'm going to quote him. It is not only true that the troubles of the last days, the troubles of the last days tend to fix the character of each person, tend to fix the character of each person according to the habits which he has already formed. But there will come a time when change will be impossible, when no opportunity will be given for repentance or apostasy. And, and what struck me with this quote is that he said, the troubles of the last day will tend to fix the character of each person until the things in our heart and mind that we'd like to get rid of and don't want and don't like the troubles of the last days, if you hadn't got rid of them, if you hadn't tried to get rid of them, if you hadn't been seeking God, if you hadn't been pursuing God, 
and you just float it along and let happen what may happen and try to have one foot in the church and one foot in the world and you know you got some feelings and attitudes towards people that's not going to help you get to heaven and you know you got stuff going on you're not hungry and thirsty praying and seeking God and you're not full of the Holy Ghost and working and ministering to the Lord and, and you're not doing what God wants you to do and yet you're just floating and cruising along he's saying if you're getting, uh, you're getting upset over every little thing and you're flying apart over things and you're not being consistent and faithful, he's saying those things, the, the trends of the end time, stress, anxiety, worry, fear, all this stuff is going to cause that mess to get intense and stronger if you don't get it out. The signs of the end time, the condition of our atmosphere of our world is affecting us. And it's pulling marriages and it's pulling parents and children and it's even pulling churches and it's pulling the nations apart and it's all this stuff. That's what the devil has come to do. So we know all of that. But I like what he said because I've seen it and I know it happens. And that is get your heart and your mind clean and clear of every foul spirit, every unforgiving spirit, every bitter spirit, everything that causes a blockade between you and somebody else, anything that's a lust of the flesh, a lust of the eye, a pride of life, get it out, get it out. Ask God to pluck it out by the root, wash you, cleanse you, purge you, redeem you, atone you, ransom you, regenerate you, new birth you, justify you, sanctify the body, mind, soul, and spirit that we be holy and acceptable unto God or else we may get hardened in that condition and we will not go in the rapture with that condition. Look at your neighbor and say, let's get sanctified. Come on now, let's get sanctified, amen. We need to make sure we're that. So these are the last words of the angel. Look at the next one, the last words of Jesus. The last words of Jesus. Verses 12 through 16. 12 through 16. Three things real quickly. Number one, he says, I come quickly. Verse 7. Verse 12, he says, I come quickly. Verse 20, he says, I come quickly. Three times Jesus says, I'm coming quickly. Why does he say quickly? He's saying it's going to be sudden. It's going to be instantaneous. And nobody's going to have time to repent. It's not going to be an altar call. It's not going to be a long, drawn-out process. When he comes, well, we heard it this morning in the twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling, that's, that's the, the light glaring and twinkling off the, the moisture on the eyeball. Literally, it's a twinkle. Amen. In the twinkling of an eye, we'll be caught out of here. No time to back up and straighten up. We need to do it. We need to do it now and live a good, godly, faithful, consistent life. Second thing I wanted to point out here is he said, and I will bring rewards according to each person's works. So it will make a difference on what you've done for Jesus. Don't get saved and satisfied. Don't get saved and pacified. And for our sake, don't get saved and crankified. Hallelujah. But keep the joy of the Lord in your heart and be happy in Jesus, amen. And let's win souls for Jesus. United in love with God, working with one another, and winning souls into the kingdom of God. This is what he's after. This is what he wants us to do. And there will be rewards. I may not see it. We saw what Brother uh, Barrett and they did, and that's good. You see and hear what others do, but there's a lot of things we never know. I know people I'm looking at tonight and this morning, they send cards, they go visiting. You'll, you and I'll never know about them. I know about some of them that they don't know I know about it. I don't believe I can say that again. But anyhow, anyhow, there's lots of folks doing lots of things and a lot of you are doing things that I don't know about. I'm doing things that you don't know about. But I'm doing things, we're doing things for the Lord to help people, to bless people, to pray for people. But let's keep on doing them, amen? Let's just keep on. Look at your neighbor and say, let's keep on working for Jesus. Working like the devil for the Lord. If we'd work as hard as the devil works, we'd get something done for Jesus, wouldn't we? Amen, we'd do that. Uh, one more thing to point out here. We have a beatitude in this statement from Jesus. He said, I come quickly. I'm bringing rewards according to each one's works. So we'll know there'll be different levels of rewards for people in heaven. And then he says in this, behold, I come quickly. Blessed. Here's the beatitude. Blessed. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of this prophecy. 
Blessed is he that keeps the saying of this prophecy. And I think he's referring to the whole book because it's God's master plan of redemption in here. So we must stay born again. Amen. Stay covered in the blood. Seek God. Stay close to God. Get a redipping in it as many times as you want to, need to. It won't hurt him. It'll help every time. Be sanctified all over again. I pray it just about every day. God save me all over again. Sanctify me all over again. Fill me with the Holy Ghost again today, Lord. And flow through me with everything you got. And help me, help me, help me. Use me as an instrument in your hand. Because I love you and I want to go to heaven and I want to fulfill it. There are two Beatitudes in this chapter. The uh, first one, let me see. I think the first one is in verse 7 that I just read. And the second one is in uh, verse 14 where you said, Blessed are they that do his commandments that they might have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Blessed are they that do his commandments because they're going to get to get into the city. Eat of the tree of life which is in the new Jerusalem through the pearly gates and the walls of Jasper, down by the streets of gold, on to the river of life, where on the banks are the tree of life, where you can eat and rejoice and be blessed of God in the fellowship of that heavenly atmosphere. Praise God. So all of that works together. These are the last words of Jesus. These are the last words of Jesus in this chapter. And then it said uh, in there that Jesus is the bright and the morning star. He's the offspring of that. just clarifying who's talking. He's the Savior. He's the only begotten Son of the Father, the incarnate Christ, born of a virgin, conceived of the Holy Ghost, the God-man who did many miracles and spoke the words of eternal life unto us and how to get there. Then when is the Lamb of God nailed to a cross, shed his blood as a sacrifice for our sins, was buried, and pronounced dead, put in a tomb, but on the third day came out with the keys of death and hell and the Old Testament saints and said, we're going up to heaven, praise God, because I live, ye shall live also. So, so he is the resurrection and the life, the life, the abundant life, and the eternal life. He is everything for us, amen. He is the son of the living God. Since he's the star of Jacob, the morning star, the bright and morning star, the bright and morning star, it's a new day. There's a new day coming for the child of God. There's a new day coming. Eric, hold on, buddy. It won't be long. We'll get that new body. Hold on. Anybody suffering with pain and affliction in your bodies? It's an ongoing daily thing. Hold on. Keep yourself under the blood of Jesus and get a firm spiritual grip on the nail-scarred hand of Jesus. Sister Ellen, you're going to have a new set of eyes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sister Gail, there'll be no diabetes over there. Glory to God. There's not going to be any need for any of these other things that help us with our health. No drug stores, no hospitals. Amen. There'll be no need for those. All we're going to have is all we're going to need, and that's a new body, and that new body comes from the blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There won't be any jail houses or court houses or dog houses. Praise God. We're going to be over there and have it made forevermore. You men ought to shout at me down right there. I'm telling you, some of you are quenching the spirit. Somebody give the Lord a praise right there. There's a better day coming for the children of God. Better day coming for the children of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Number three, the last words of the spirit and the bride. Who did we say the bride is? Church. The church. So the last words of the spirit and the bride, verse 17. This is an awesome statement here. The spirit of God, which is the prophetic spirit, the Holy Ghost with all those gifts and fruit, the Holy Ghost in the church is calling for Jesus to come and get us and rapture us out of here. He's calling for people or calling for the Lord to rapture us. Look at that. He says, and he's calling for the sinner to come forth. It is the evangelistic call of the Spirit through the church to the sinner. He says two things. Here are the last words of the Spirit and the bride. The bride is the church, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. What's the last words the Holy Ghost and the church are going to say before the Lord takes us out of here? Let him that is a thirst... 
What does it say? Let him that is a thirst come. Amen. Amen. Let him that is a thirst come to Jesus. And the second thing he said, and whosoever will, whosoever wants, whosoever makes up their mind, whosoever has come to the conclusion, I need God, I need Jesus, I need salvation. Let whosoever will, let him drink of the water of life freely. It's to whosoever will. If a person wants to get saved, they can get saved. Because that's the Lord telling them, I love you and I want you saved. Amen. I think I elaborated on that last week. So that's the last words of the Spirit and the Bride. Are you following me tonight? Are you following me tonight? Do you see the last words of the angel? The last words of Jesus? The last words of the Spirit in the church? Number four, the last words of the Apostle John, verses 18 and 19. And he says, there will be a warning. He gives a warning of judgment on anyone that tries to change this book. And I'm telling you, there's a bunch of liberal theologians and churches who don't believe that book is inspired, who don't believe in the miracles and signs and wonders therein, and don't even believe in a rapture or a second coming of the Lord. They think the world's going to keep going until it gradually gets better and better. They better take another look because it's doing what Jesus said. It's getting worse and worse, which he said it would until he can't stand it anymore and takes his church out of it and then pours wrath and judgment on it. And that's where we are. That's where we are in this world right now. John puts a warning of judgment on anyone who tries to change this message. And then he puts a warning to everyone that hears this prophecy. Anybody that hears this prophecy is accountable for what they do with it. Did you know you cannot hear the gospel of Jesus preached and turn around and walk away from it and act like nothing ever happened? Once you hear it, you're unaccountable. You'll never get away from it. The Holy Ghost will chase you down. How many of you have been brought up in church, even as a child, like myself? Amen. I won't ask you to raise your hand, but a lot of us didn't stay in church, did we? But it, it didn't make any difference if you went to the bar, if you started with the group uh, and started doing stuff, whether it was drinking, drugging, doping, running around, partying, cursing, swearing. Every time you got going, it wouldn't be too, too many minutes. It wouldn't be too many hours. And you'd think because the Holy Ghost would tap you and say, don't forget, God's watching you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. You cannot run away from him. You can run, but you'll never get away from him. Ask Jonah. Amen. As a matter of fact, you can ask any of us. Amen. And I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad he chased me down. Good God. I'm glad he chased me down. He chased me down and tripped me and threw me in the ditch and helped me see what a, what a horrible rascal I was. And then he saved my sinful soul and picked me up and turned me around and gave me a new He picked me up and turned me around and made something out of my life. Hallelujah. Woo! Anybody with me on that? Give him some praise right there. Woo! I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. He saved me, he saved me, he saved me. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Woo! Go ahead and enjoy your salvation. Go ahead and enjoy your salvation. Woo! I'm glad I didn't wait too long. I'm glad I didn't wait till it was too late. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. Glory to God. Go ahead, Marsha. I feel the same way. Praise God. 
Come on and praise him. If you're saved, give him some love. Give him some love. Give him some praise. Ray? Give me one of those praises you got. There it is. There it is. Hooray for Jesus, Brother Ray says. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Well, hallelujah for amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Praise God was blind, but now I see. <laughs> Woo! Hey! Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already, already, already come. Twas grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. Woo! My God. And if you don't have this, you can have it. These altars are open any time. You can have joy of the Lord. Joy unspeakable and. Woo! This is that resurrection power. This is that resurrection spirit. This is what's going to take us out of here. It's going to take us out of here. It's going to take us out of here. Woo! Help us sing that song, Glory I'm Saved. Go ahead. Y'all know how to put it together. My Lord, we're just praising God. Just praising God. Just praising God. We heard the call of Jesus. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. Come on, open your mouth and let it rip. Come on, let it fly. My sins are all gone. Praise right there. Will you give him a praise right there? Oh, great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I heard the prophecies. I'm glad I heard the gospel and turned to Jesus and he saved my soul. Let me give you this and I'll be done. Number five, the last promise in the Bible. The last promise in the Bible. What does it say? Surely. That's the last promise in the Bible. Surely I come quickly. Who's saying that? Jesus. Surely I come. People say, oh, he's not going to come. There's not going to be a resurrection. Oh, that's a bunch of fantasy. Same book told me how to get saved, kept me saved, tells me he's coming back, and I believe he's coming back. And the last promise in the Bible is not even preach the gospel. It's surely I come quickly. This thing's wrapping up, folks. This thing is wrapping up. Look at your neighbor and say the last promise in the Bible says, surely I come quickly. Tell them again. Surely I come quickly. The Lord is coming. Number six, the last prayer is also in verse 20. And the last prayer in the Bible says, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Look at this. The last prayer in the Bible is not for souls to be saved. It's praying for the Lord to come and get the church. The last prayer. Come, 
Lord Jesus. And number seven, last thing, is the last benediction in the Bible. Of all 66 books, here's the last benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And how appropriate. It was grace that saved us. It is grace that kept us. And it will be grace that will take us out of here. Good God, stand with me all over the house. Woo! Glory to God. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. The grace, undeserved favor of God. It's all there. It's all with us. These are the last words of the Bible. Did you get it? Look at all of it. It's all summarized right there in the last chapter. The last words of the angel. The last words of Jesus. The last words of the Holy Ghost. The last words of the church. The last words of the Apostle John the Revelator. The last promise. The last prayer. And the last benediction. Sounds like things are wrapping up. And they all hook up with where we are today. The Lord's coming. The Lord's coming. The Lord is coming back again to rapture us. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Is there anybody in the house that would even think, do you have a thought there's something in my life that might keep me out of the rapture? Is there anybody in the house that would say, preacher, I'm not sure. I don't have the peace. I'm not sure if I'm I'm ready. I want to be sure. Come to this altar as quickly as you can. As quickly. quickly. I would run to these altars if I knew or had any doubt whether I was saved or not. And the devil will do his best to even cause Christians to doubt their salvation. Just like some may be here tonight and afraid somebody will think, who cares? They're not going to help you when you stand before God. You're not going to help me when I stand before God on Judgment Day. When the rapture takes place, I can't call on you to help get me off the ground. It's Him. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. I am not ashamed to be a Pentecostal, but I'm not ashamed to be a born-again Christian. Hallelujah. And be a part of the family of God. Woo! A Bible-thumping preacher that believes in a heaven to gain and a hell to shun a devil to resist and a Jesus to love and a God to worship amen do you feel that way are you convicted of that are you anchored in him tonight oh give me one of those coming soon songs Jesus is coming soon or come he's coming that's it that's a good I'm teaching the music he's coming Sing it with him. With joy, we'll welcome his return. It may be morn, it may be night or noon, our Lord is come. That's our hope. That's our guarantee. That's our assurance. Don't you look. If you listen to the news and look around, you're going to be looking in the wrong direction. If you let your mind get caught up meditating on all this stuff, it's going to get you down. Where does the Bible say for us to look? Lift up your hands and know your... Hallelujah. Lift up your head, saints. We're not going to be here much longer. We're not going to be here much longer. And if it is in God's will for the church to be here another 10, 20 years or more, I pray he'll let me fall dead just any second now and let me go on. I said it in this pulpit and I believe it because I love the Lord and I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. And this world's getting worse and worse. There's so much mess going on. My heart aches with yours when you call me and you talk to me about your requests and needs. And we see so much pain and anguish. But there's another power loose. And he's all over this house tonight. Greater is he that is in us than... Oh, yes. We are more than through Jesus Christ. Because he's our king of glory. He's our Lord of lords. Could you get in groups of two or three... 
So you can share any requests you've got for family or friends that are unsaved, backsliders that may come on your heart. Let's pray for God to help us reach out and win souls. Let's pray for God to help us reach out and win souls. Turn around, find you somebody to pray with, and let's pray for God to help us, lead us to win souls.